Hello and welcome to News Click. As part of the US AFPAC strategy and to complement its military surge in Afghanistan, the United States is investing a great deal in its engagement with Pakistan and its efforts to rope in Pakistan to assist it in completing its task in Afghanistan. Having acknowledged that the US campaign in Afghanistan cannot succeed without Pakistani cooperation, US efforts are aimed at securing greater Pakistani military and intelligence cooperation in tackling both the Afghan and Pakistani Taliban. On its part, Pakistan seeks to leverage this growing US dependence to obtain more military equipment and financial assistance to position itself as an indispensable part of any US-Afghan deal with sections of the Taliban, and ultimately to secure greater strategic depth in Afghanistan as well as vis-a-vis -vis India. The recent US-Pakistan strategic dialogue in Washington has been a major milestone in these efforts. To discuss this, we have with us today Professor Ajaz Ahmed, well known to viewers of NewsClick. Ajaz, you followed the recent strategic dialogue between the US and Pakistan. What do you think the US has obtained and what do you think Pakistan has given? Um, I don't think substantively the, this, uh, the, the uh, strategic dialogue, as it was called, has achieved all that much, although in symbolism it has achieved a lot. Pakistan sent them 55 page long wish list of what they wanted out of this. Knowing perfectly well that this was a document on the basis of which negotiations will take place over the next several years. That's one sort of thing. The other is that, you know, when Joe Biden was uh, 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 during his campaign when he was actually a presidential aspirant, he used to argue that what the U.S. needs to do in Pakistan is to cut military aid and focus only on that part of military aid which is required for um, war against terrorism, as it is called, and vastly expand economic aid and mechanisms to actually deliver it to the ground so that the kind of poverty and the kind of illiteracy and so on, which feeds into this Islamic extremism, is gradually eradicated. Um, <clears throat> what, is, what has happened in the interim is that Pakistan has refused to, and the U.S. has had to accept the refusal, okay. to um, cut down on the military aid that is specifically designed uh, to counter India. Uh, Pakistan, uh, the U.S. has had to uh, backtrack on that. But very large part of this uh, strategic dialogue actually implements or hopes to implement that other policy where virtually every part of the Pakistani economy is now to be uh, covered by this strategic dialogue. Uh, huge aid packages will come over the next few years uh, under American uh, uh, oversight sure. and with massive injection of American private capital. Right. Uh, the, uh, the other thing that they have, uh, the Pakistanis have achieved is that, you know, there has been a dialogue going on between Pakistan and the United States since 2002 over the question of Pakistan's nuclear arsenal. Um, American concern that this can fall into the hands of the extremists, that it's not under control, Pakistan itself may become a rogue state, and so on and so forth. So Americans have wanted control over it. My personal view is that much of that control has actually been ceded. Uh, and in lieu of that, Pakistan wanted... Pakistan wants a nuclear deal uh, <clears throat> rather similar to the one that India obtained. Which, of course, the Indian media and the commentariat have been obsessed about. They, they, they're obsessed about it, and, and I think it's, it's, it says something about their psychology and mentality. Right. Uh, <clears throat> now, uh, the very fact that this now is part of the 
um, document or rather the statement issued after the dialogue now uh, uh, talks about the fact that non issues of non-proliferation and this, that, and the other were, were discussed uh, is a bit of a victory for, for Pakistan. I don't believe that any sort of deal is coming through in any um, uh, few, uh, you know, uh, near future. However, if the U.S. dependence on Pakistan of the ex to the extent that it now depends on Pakistan continues, then they may uh, have to. Pakistan will have the le leverage. Uh, the the question then will be, what is it that Pakistan will have to give up? Um, you know, it's widely believed that uh, India withdrew from the Pakistan, Iran-Pakistan, India pipeline. Uh, you know, under pressure. So the nuclear deal, it was one of the concessions India is said to have ma made. Now, Pakistan has just signed a 7.5 billion uh, uh, deal with, uh, uh, with Iran. Uh, will they have to sort of freeze it or backtrack on it yeah. or drop it in some way? Uh, <clears throat> will they have to give total control to the... Uh, some of the key provisions of the nuclear deal with India will never be granted to Pakistan. For example, the separation between sure. uh, nuclear civilian plants, and civilian and military and so on. That sort of thing will never be granted to Pakistan. Um, uh, I think a nuclear tra trade in nuclear uh, technology uh, it, it, it's a matter of time. Sure. It's a under, under a safeguard. Under so safeguard. Safeguard. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me move away from the nuclear uh, issue. Coming back to the role that Pakistan is expected to play or wants to play in the AFPAC uh, policy of the uh, U.S., Pakistan is clearly trying to position itself as the key interlocutor uh, in any deal involving the Taliban. These attempts of the Afghan government to bring the Taliban into the picture. Uh, many commentators believe that the recent arrest in Karachi of a leading Afghan Taliban figure, Mullah Brother, uh, was an effort by Pakistan to preempt in some ways this ongoing dialogue by Afghanistan. In fact, the UN's uh, special envoy, Kai Edi, has said as much, while the Americans don't seem to. Uh, think so. How is that playing out in this process? And do you think that Pakistan is using that as a particularly strong lever in its ongoing dialogue with the U.S.? Um, my uh, my own view actually falls between the two different interpretations of, of that arrest, and not only that arrest. There has been a space. Several of them. Five or six very key leaders of the Taliban, uh, almost all of them in Karachi. Uh, so that uh, it appears as if uh, it's, it's a question of smashing, more or less, the so-called Koyata Shura. Um, <clears throat> I think I think the 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 the, the, the place where the U.S. and uh, Pakistani interests in this coincide is the isolation of Mullah Omar. To isolate to him to the point where they do the bidding of the Pakistan government and the American government. In that, I don't believe there is any fundamental difference between the U.S. and Pakistan on that issue. But do you think the uh, uh, <clears throat> interests of Pakistan and the U.S. coincide on this? Because Pakistan would expect Mullah Omar or whoever to play a certain kind of role uh, in Afghanistan, which uh, the U.S. Uh, no, uh, even today, uh, Gates had has again said, we have to weaken them more before bringing them in. Sure. So in the long run, everyone understands that, that there can be no solution without, without the bringing them in in some way. They have also learned from experience that there's the good Taliban, the moment that any Talib starts talking to the U.S. He becomes without a, the uh, permission of Mullah Omar, he, he, he's dead sure. politically. So they have, uh, they have, they are coming around to the idea that you have, if you want peace, you have to talk to your enemies, sure. uh, not you know uh, people you have bought or something like that. On on the uh, and a weakened Mullah Omar that will do Pakistan's bidding we'll is is also in Pakistan's good. interest. Sure, you know, cutting the Taliban themselves to size and keep them dependent on Pakistan is also.
Sure. Uh, so uh, they're b by and large. But the very, a very big factor where Americans, I think, are completely confused and don't know what to do about it, is Pakistan's interest that India's presence be curtailed drastically. Yes. Pakistanis want this training of, of Afghan soldiers by the Indians to stop and for Pakistanis to take that over. Kiani has said that openly. He said, I'm not going to have on my northern border soldiers trained by Pakistan Indians with, with an Indian mindset. Sure. Now, there I don't know what the Americans are going to do or are capable of doing. 